Let's welcome Sylvain. Okay. Good morning, gents. Good morning. Where are you calling from, Sylvain? Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. Aha. Yes. And Sylvain does security is the name of the game for him. He does, Sylvain does be scary what's going on here uh, in terms of number of uh, parolees or house arrests or the potential in the U.S. is about 8 million adults, um, which just that, that by themselves is kind of crazy to think about that figure. Did you it's, say uh, 8 million? Yes. 8 million. Yes, wow. Yes, correct. Currently we have in jail, which is we're the number one country in the world for that, we have uh, 2.3 million uh, inmates currently uh, in our country. And uh, we uh, spent last year $74 billion to uh, keep these uh, people uh, in jail, incarcerated. Wow. And that's amazing when you think about that. Uh, it's, it's a number that, uh, for me, is just mind-boggling. There are a lot so, of there are a lot of countries in the world that don't have that as an economy. Let alone, that's it's hundred. As a matter of fact, is uh, more than uh, hundred thirty three country in the world GDP. Really? Uh, yes. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. That is amazing. Well, tell us about your system. Well, uh, first, let me just tell you about Southern ITS. The okay. trading symbol is uh, SITS. Okay. Uh, we, uh, as a company, excel in uh, electronic security uh, that requires a lot of compliance. And that's why you mentioned earlier casino. That's one of our uh, strong suits because uh, casino requires a lot of compliance through gaming commission. We are doing our first gel project in terms of security currently right now, which is another area that requires compliance. So it's kind of a more... Uh, important for them uh, the process and how you do that and that's what we excel at. Uh, the ankle bracelet came in because of our knowledge of the industry obviously in, in the US and uh, like I said this market is uh, pretty incredible uh, when you look at the figure it's, it's almost scary um, with 74 billion dollars spent and the average inmate cost the lowest in the country is fourteen thousand dollars per year and the highest is uh, over sixty thousand dollar, which is in the, the state of New York, and I think California is even higher than that. So the costs for the taxpayer for all these people to remain in jail, and sometimes they're not necessarily uh, violent offenders. Um, it could be as 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 something like uh, not paying your uh, traffic uh, violation ticket, and you will end up in jail. It could be many things that put you in jail. Uh, they don't want to uh, have these people in jail anymore, but they want to restrain them, and where, that's where the ankle bracelet comes in. In California, there's over 100,000 of them right now in use. Uh, the ankle bracelet. Yeah. So there is definitely a market for uh, that, and I think it's going to be increasing over the next years as the jails are getting so crowded and the uh, taxpayer bill is getting so high that people are starting to notice that and also changes in the laws in regards to uh, legalized marijuana uh, that's changing also uh, the landscape for uh, jails so our system is very simple uh, it's an ankle bracelet that you uh, attach to your ankle and gives a position at all time the major difference in our system is the number of false alarms this is really the, the two key factor in this industry currently is the technology they use doesn't allow them to eliminate uh, enough false alarms. Uh, you take a case study in California, each correctional officer was receiving over 3,000 per day alarms. And what happened with that? Well, people don't pay attention. If you are receiving 3,000 texts a day saying that uh, such and such is doing or is disappearing or whatever is the issue, you cannot look at them. There's not enough time in the day to look at all these alarms. So people fall to the crack and some people die. Our technology is quite different because we use not only GPS for positioning, but we use also GPRS is that, uh, I don't know if you're familiar how GPS works, but GPS just tells you where you are. So you need to communicate that information if you want the world to know. That's why you use cell phone technology to communicate that information right. to a central point. Well, in this case, what we're using is a more advanced way of doing it, that we have different false facts. 
this GPS, uh, if any of you have used a radio satellite or even one of these little Garmin uh, GPS to uh, help you uh, with directions, sure. if you uh, get into an urban situation with uh, buildings, you're going to lose signal. You enter a parking lot, you're going to lose signal. And these are all the false alarms that these guys in my competition is getting. Oh, okay. So every time you lose signal, they don't know where the guy is. For them, they see that as not knowing where the, the ankle bracelet is. But we have a way to find that ankle bracelet. We have four tiers of finding. Uh, if GPS is not working, if cell phone is not working, if NMS is not working, if SMS is not working, these are all different bands used by the carrier. So we still find where you at, regardless, because we always use a combination of all these things. Did you say GPRS? Yes, that's correct. That's basically what? positioning GPS through cell phone using what is called triangulation. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I've seen that in some of the crime shows. Okay, I never even knew what that was. Okay, interesting. And basically uh, what it does is uh, it gives a position that is not as precise as GPS, uh, the precision will depend on the number of towers that you can uh, find yourself at. So in a, a, a suburban area, there's less cell phone tower, so the precision will, um, instead of being 5 to 10 feet, might be up to 20 feet, 30 feet, 60 feet. Sure. But at that point, it doesn't make a difference. You're close enough to find the person. Wow. Now, what about yeah, before before they started using you know a more advanced GPS um, chip in the phones? Triangulation was the traditional way of you know locating the phone or right. getting you directions. Uh, you know, you know, as the guest is saying, it's not as accurate as GPS, but it does work. It's accurate enough for you if you yeah, are absolutely. on the road and you want to know if so you're going somewhere, that will not put you out of the highway. Uh, right. There's also part of the software you can develop to make sure that you, the software know where you were, where you're going, and if the GPS fell because there's a big hill or a building, then you can counterbalance uh, knowing that you're going in that direction and just make sure you stay on, stay on track. Sylvain, what, how... Um you know, you see every once in a while on, on one of the shows uh, somebody, like, cutting a bracelet Hi, off this or is something like that. How difficult is that? Well, ours is much more difficult. Uh, you just cannot take a, a pair of scissors and cut it. You're going to need, obviously, there's nothing. You know, when somebody has will, there's weight. So right. if you want to cut it, you can take a cutter that cut basically through a uh, locker, uh, you know, these little lock that you have in the locker room or uh, – these will definitely eventually cut. You, we can cut anything nowadays. Unfortunately, it's going to hurt the person that's going to do it, but they will succeed at the end of the day. But the, the main thing here is we have a various fiber optic in it, and as soon as that fiber optic, uh, basically, which is the fiber optic is a glass wire, which sure. you can lighten it. As soon as you cut that or you break it, what happens is I send a signal that you're trying to temper with the uh, bracelet. Which wow. is, at that point, it's up to us. And this is where we make a difference. So what we call it is human intervention. Mm -hmm. For us, it's, you cannot only rely on technology. This is very important. You have a lot of people. And you take a bail bond, man, for example. Um, I don't know if you know how bail bond works, but normally it's about 10% of the, of the price of, of the bail bond that the judge asks you to pay for it to be released. So if it's a $500,000, then you need to be able to pay $50,000 more that it will not be reimbursed. It's kind of like the fee that they charge it. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy wants to make sure that he knows where his client is because he's responsible. If you don't show up in court at that date, then the court takes that $500,000 with a bail bond posted for you. So these guys want to keep also their clients in, in, in line, make sure that they know where they are at all time, and they can go get them if they're not showing up in court because their money is at risk. So that's another example. So obviously, if you start to try to cut it, I'll send a signal. If it's a correctional office, then our human intervention gets involved in it and make sure that it is a really a, a situation where somebody is breaking the signal. 
Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh, it, well, it sounds like you have just added a, a whole new dimension to what's already out there in, in law enforcement now. That sounds great. Yeah, that's the objective. The objective is always to lead fraud as much as possible. Yeah. If you come uh, to the table offering the same, what do you do? You really there's a piece of pie, and everybody wants to basically protect their turf and protect their pie, uh, at least their piece of the pie. And so if you're going to take somebody else's piece of pie, you better be good. Either it's going to be by pricing or it's going to be by innovation or quality of the product. In this case, we're trying to do three of them so we can get a fair share of that piece. I know Charles uh, usually asks the question, uh, uh, your competition, who, who out there is doing this new technology? Well, there's a bunch of them using old and new technology. Uh, I'm not going to talk bad about my, my competition on that. Uh, they probably don't even know that they exist at this point, which is perfect. That's the way it works. Um, you always get surprised by the newcomer that uh, see this in a different view than you've done. They've been involved in it for quite some time. Um, for example, there's BI. That's one of the uh, companies that is leading in that field. Um, they have a great product, but they don't bring it to the market the way we are bringing it to the market. What, so is, your, that, uh, what is your bracelet, for lack of a better way of putting it, what is your bracelet cost? Well, it's not so much as a cost because it's a service. And right. that service basically uh, range in between, I will say, Seventy-five to one hundred fifty dollar per week uh, for the service, depending on the level of service that you're looking for. And you, uh, after, uh, okay, let's say I have a bracelet. I go to court. My case is dismissed. Do you then take the bracelet and reuse it, or does it have uh, to be cut off and tossed? Well, it really depends on the length uh, of the. You see, this is this works with the rechargeable battery, okay. and. Uh, in our belief that the one you're going to do about six months to a year of effectiveness, it's kind of like your cell phone. Your cell phone, when it's brand new, the battery lasts longer, obviously. And as it ages, your battery is retaining memory and losing its capacity. Right. So our goal is to always be within five to seven days between the recharge, which is one of the issues of our competition. To this day, when they use GPS, GPRS, and all these technology, and not passive technology like RFID, what happens is they need to recharge every day. Well, every day it's kind of a burden if you have to recharge every day. In our case, we recharge once a week, which is much more convenient for the offenders to have a recharge once a week. So saying that, that explains why I think that a, uh, an ankle bracelet used six months to a year, unless the person has it to have it more than for a year, then it will last. Uh, that's the target use of the ankle bracelet. Okay. So they're kind of long-term disposable. Correct. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, and then also uh, tell us what SITS does for casinos, especially in Mississippi and the East Coast. The, uh, the last casino we did is called Rocky Gap uh, in Maryland. Um, for us, that was the type of project that we look at. Our size project vary between normally one to three million, up to five million. That's the size of the project. And what we do, we bring in uh, not only electronic sur surveillance, uh, electronic security such as access control, uh, video surveillance, uh, sometimes audio and video in the casino. We bring networking. So everything that is uh, basically uh, IT infrastructure we get involved into, uh, phone which is all IP driven as you know uh, nowadays. There's nobody using any more analog phone. So uh, this is what we do. Uh, we kind of say uh, in that field we're kind of like a well hunters. So, and we're changing our model a little bit right now at this point. We're trying to uh, because the nature of the casino industry, their budget normally starts in April uh, or uh, May, May first or April first. That's their new budget. That's when they start to spend money. This time of the year for us uh, historically it's always a time that is very quiet because casino normally. Unless they have money towards the end of the year, they need to spend. They try not to disrupt their business during the holiday season, which is a good season for them. So after the holiday is quiet, that's unfortunately they normally don't have the money until the new budget come in. So we get busy in the second quarter, third quarter, and uh, we do our year in these two quarters normally. So we're trying to change that. 
uh, right now. So we're diversifying what we're doing. Like I said, we're doing a gel currently right now. It's not a large project, but it's a it's a nice size project, and um, we think that that way uh, we're going to be able to flatten our revenue over the four quarter of the year rather than only two quarters. So, do you uh, like you talked about casinos? Uh, are, would they be like the, some of the, say some of the smaller ones like Biloxi, Mississippi? Um, compared to like where you are in Las Vegas with the winds and people like that? Well, people don't realize how many cameras there's in a casino. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I can't. No, I can't imagine, but, uh, yeah, it, it would have to be hundreds uh, it's, or it's thousands. It's so crazy, but for us, a small casino, uh, my kids, you talk about 500 cameras. That's a small casino. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my you, can, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a, a camera in a casino. Boy, that's that correct. No, I mean, did. if you go to uh, the latest, this was City Center, uh, there is uh, pro- probably about 10,000 cameras in the whole. Uh, wow. Combo. City Center is where? That's, that's the new the, uh, That's the that's new area. Correct. That's between, uh, just between the New York, New York, or Monte Carlo and Bellagio. That's mixed right there. Where the Cosmopolitan is also, that's all near the City you know, Center. Aria and... Um... Yeah, that's part of the City Center. Wow. Yeah. 10,000 cameras? Uh, a casino like uh, Caesar Palace is over 3,000 cameras. So yeah. The number of cameras, the sheer number of cameras is humongous. We are finalizing an agreement right now to be an IBM certified partner. Part of one of the things we're trying to achieve is to go with a new technology using Blade Server. Because of the sheer number of uh, camera. you talk now about high definition. So yeah. most of the world, this is where it's exciting about Southern ITS and the casino world. There were analog video with video recorder. Believe it or not, people were using VCRs to record all these events in the casino. And no way. Today, there's 20% <laughs> of the casino still using VCR, and some of them in Las Vegas. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. And oh you have to understand God. how crazy that is. Because for each VCR, <laughs> you have one videotape. Sure. And for each day, you have three shifts of eight hours because that's the longest you can record on a VHS tape is eight hours. So every eight hours, they change the tape, and you have to understand that they need to keep these tapes anywhere between seven to 15 to 30 days, depending on the area of the camera. So you have basically an inventory of tapes that you have to keep and maintain. And if you want to go back and find an event, it's pretty complex. So the change to DVR or VCR or NVR, from VCR to NVR and DVR, so these acronym means NVR is Network Video Recorder, DVR means Digital Video Recorder. The first wave came in 2002, 2003, and 2004 in the casino world, which was DVR, Digital Video Recorder which basically recorded every image in analog mode, which is a low resolution. Now, obviously, we talk about high definition. So you talk about 1080p, which is the number of pixels you can have. You all seen, you know, on TV, they show a picture of a guy that robbed a, a convenience store or something, and you cannot identify that person even if he was your brother. Right. Because it's so pixelated. As soon as you try to make the picture bigger, it's pixelated. HD allows you to bring that picture bigger with a higher quality of video. So all these casino, the further early adapters and then the other one that followed, brought these DVR. Now they're moving into what's called NVR, which is a network video recorder. So it's all IP address. It's all recording in a big, if you want, the mass uh, of petabyte of, of uh, storage which all the video comes in, and you can then retrieve the video either by event, by camera, uh, by pixelation. If you leave a purse on the desk, for example, and the purse disappears, you take your mouse, you square around that purse where it was on the table, and you can go back when the basically pixelation or color change on the table and find the exact moment. And that takes less than five seconds to do that compared to, can you imagine, VCR or other technology. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, now, uh when you obviously the 1080 uh, people are starting to get accustomed to that that's your 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 home uh, if you've got hd television that's that's uh, ideally that's what the home screen is um uh, 
Is there a possibility of like your company doing all of this in a cloud I mean, and and just kind of combining all of this stuff? So if if there's no, it is possible, but not for casino. You have to understand that casino are regulated by each state with their own gaming commission. I got you. Okay. Okay. And these guys run into what we call a closed VPN, okay, which is a virtual private network. Okay. Nobody can come in, nobody can come out because they want nobody to tamper with the images. Obviously, so yeah. It's very high security, and they will never allow that. Most of the gaming commission don't even allow you to remotely uh, view from one casino to the other. Let's say you have two casinos, and you say, well, that is stupid. I have, you know... 200 camera in one and 300 camera in one, I can have one central and monitor both. Most of the gaming commission don't allow that still today. Some of them start to allow it, but under very strict ruling condition. Well, so you ha the cloud is not something that will happen in, in this, but in other venue, yes, when you, because there's so much money. They were talking about uh, uh, Alden Sheldon, the owner of the Venetian, Last year, he was making, I think they say, like $32 million a day or a week or something like that, a crazy number of money. So obviously, we talk about large amount of money in the gaming industry, and as long as there's a large amount of money, there's a large amount of tax. Sure. And when you talk about a large amount of tax, you talk a lot about compliance and people wanting to make sure they get paid what they should get paid. Sure. So the story for the, 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 the Southern ITS, or ITS, the trading symbol, it's very unique because at this point, I believe that we're going to see over the next two, three years, a, a, a spike in the demand. A lot of these casino now, they have that older technology that they need to change to HD. So you're going to see a potential on the market for casino tremendous over the next uh, three to five years maximum. And keep in mind, there's over a thousand casino in the U.S. currently with 23 states accepting gaming. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's good. Okay, so you got market. yeah, you've got uh, well, I I guess uh, a lot of the uh, Indian nations have managed to create casinos and well, obviously we got we have the Seminoles here, um, and yeah, I I never thought the numbers were that big, but uh, interesting, huh? Yes, uh, and, and that's why I think we're sort of ITS the plan when people ask me. So what's your plan? Obviously, we want to. A focus on the casino market, which has been one of our success story. Uh, but we need to grow our business. So along with that, we also focusing on other certain market that require compliance, like I did, like the hospital, like the ankle bracelet. Uh, the ankle bracelet, EMAP now is the one making uh, the product, but Southern ITS in this case is the one running with it in certain states uh, just to uh, – they have, because we have offices, we have currently offices right now in Mississippi, in Las Vegas, and in Colorado. So saying that in these states where we have offices, we have a better reach than EMAP now has a reach. So that's why we're going us after the market and offering the full-fledged solution there. Well, that sounds great. That sounds great. And how much stock is there outstanding? Uh, outstanding is $188 million. The float is 147 million. Okay. The daily trading uh, for the three-month average is about four million share. So there's a nice volume. The day normally you get about two to four million per day of trading. So there's liquidity there. I think our PPS, in my opinion, um, obviously it's my children, you know, and I love my children, and they're all beautiful. So I think that the PPS is not right. Right now we're trading at point between 0.006 to 0 0.007. Right. Uh, based on what I know, what's coming up, what we're doing, our marketing efforts, sales efforts, we announced that we were growing our sales group. We did that uh, at the end of last year. Now these people are getting up, up and running right now. So we're going to see that diversification I told you about. Our goal this year is to do $5 million in sales. Uh, last year we did just shy of two million. Uh, with the resources that we have, it was pretty good. Now we are, I think we are in, in, not on the first quarter, but the, at my second quarter kick in and third and fourth, we're going to catch up for the loss of the first quarter. Was training was the fact that the casino industry never really do much in that quarter. So I'm going to see a big uh, increase in sales for us 
over the quarter two, three, and four. And uh, you bought a lot of stock back, didn't you? Not yet. We are planning to start to do that in March, April, in the first after the first quarter in Q2. Uh, we're going to reduce our outstanding our uh, authorized, which is 500 uh, million share to 250. And uh, we're going to start to buy back some stock uh, from the market at that point. Well, I mean, you know, you have to look at the economics of it, uh, Mike. It's a company that .007 uh, with almost 200 million shares outstanding is only a million four in market cap. And you're talking about, you know, going from uh, 2 million up to, you know, 4 or 5 million you know, you're talking about being a fraction. Your your company is worth a fraction of its sales. Uh, you know, and with the service side of the business, it would seem to me, uh, you know, that the uh, margins would only get better, not worse. That's okay. correct. It, okay, so you know, you're talking about a company right now, at um, you know, as I said, at 007. Um, you know, you're talking about a company with 1.4 million, actually less than 1.4 million, because I rounded up the number of shares, doing 2 million in revenues. You know, uh, the room on the upside is pretty, you know, pretty big. And you just mentioned it in terms of the revenue that go with the Inco bracelet. Is you talk about a business model that has recurrent revenue that they basically happen every month when you sign a contract with a state. And you start to supply these ankle bracelets. It's a three to five year contract. Yeah, and I mean, it's not like it's not months. like you have to build out the system. The system is already there. Correct. You're just adding components to it for it to track. And so, uh, you know, it's like saying the the first 19 people pay the overhead, and the next 19 people are. I mean, I know that that's not the number, but conceptually, you know, the first hundred people pay the overhead and the second hundred people are profit. And, sure. and usually yeah. I would think, uh, Sylvain, that if you sign a contract with, say, the state of California or state of Nevada or uh, wherever it is, I mean, those contracts probably won't be going away anytime soon if it's a good product. Correct. Yeah, you normally, know, like I said, the length is three to five years for these contracts. So when you get awarded a contract, you are supplying the service for three to five years. Mm hmm yeah, I'm going to guess that the way that um, the way that states have overcrowding in the prison systems, that they're going to let out some of these, you know, nonviolent offenders, but want to keep track of them until their, you know, term, their sentence, you know, is over until they've served, and you know, home confinement is a pretty big issue here. Sure. And in many cases, uh, the way that this works is the uh, offender is the one paying for the fee, uh, right. the state. Uh, because at that point, the state says, hey, you can keep your job. You go from your job to, to your house, which we can do with virtual fencing. Basically, our system allows, you, allows us to make sure that you stay within some perimeters. So you cannot go outside. If you go outside, it creates uh, alarms which at that point, the correctional officer, when you go meet him on your visit, he's going to get a one-page information of everything you've done wrong during that period of time. And it will tell you if you want to retain your privilege of being outside the jail, you're going to have to comply with the rules, which just says you can only go to work and to home every day, and that's it. You cannot wander around. So, And I think that uh, the fact that the people are paying themselves also makes them more responsible for that. And if you have a choice between going to jail or staying home, uh, even at the $75 or $150 a week, you will take that because that's a car payment. You'd rather be in your house than being in a jail. Yeah. No, oh, sure. Yeah, I've heard this a lot when I've gone um, into courtrooms where they, you know, where you uh, hear. Uh, it's kind of strange up here. If you drive a car without a valid register, let's say your registration expires. Well, that's actually a fairly serious issue. You're driving an unregistered vehicle, for example, and you go into court and they make a really big deal of it, um, and uh, 
they'll you know they'll let you out because obviously it's not an overwhelming offense. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, uh, anything that the court demands that you do through the probation department, you pay for. There's a fee per month through probation. So, you know, it's easy to recoup that. And, of course, as, you know, as our guest is saying, you'd much rather be at home than sitting in a jail. But I think the median in the U.S. is roughly close to $50,000 a year yeah. per inmate. So, yeah. you know, yeah, that's, that's, who's, that's my tax. You, was... you, get a, you get a guy who, you know, can go from work to home to work, and, you know, all of a sudden you're not feeding them for that year. And you can be sure that that's a big piece of, you know, uh, of what it costs to keep someone there. Well, I'm just thinking about going to jail in, in, in New York State. I mean, it's a 60 grand, that's, uh, that, that'd be a raise for me. It's three square meals a day, right? Oh. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, see, Greg, there's no upside. That's as far as you can get. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, Sylvain, it sounds like uh, you've got a fascinating uh, dual-pronged company here, and um, and seeing that you're on the cutting edge of all the HD stuff, I mean that's where everything is going. Uh, and uh, I, you have totally blown me away with the fact that some of these casinos still have v, uh, VCRs. I mean, that is just mind-boggling. Because, uh, you know, those tapes can be destroyed in a matter of weeks uh, by themselves. I mean, if, if they're in a hot room or something like that, they'll be gone. Or just lost. I mean, misplaced. Yeah. And, and, and let's say you, you go into the casino and there, there's, a, there's a, actually, I find the news in, in Nevada right now. This guy went to one of the casino downtown, the old downtown, and uh, one of the remodeled property. And betted on the Super Bowl five hundred thousand dollar, and he's claiming that he was too drunk, and you know he should not have. They should have stopped him and not make him bet five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, all right. So you can debate what the guy will have done if he will have won his bet. He will have probably not say no. I don't want the money, uh, obviously. But that's beside the point. So what happened in this case? Gaming commission will get involved, and they will ask to see all the video related to that event. You bet. You bet. Well, now, if you have this in VCR, you, you realize that you talk about each camera individually is only one tape. So if you jump from one place to the other, you go to the bar, you go to the, the table, or you go to the sports setting, you go to the restaurant, because he said that he was intoxicated by the casino with all the freebies. Yep. That's why it impairs his judgment. Yep. That's going to be his claim. So, but in tape, if you were VCR, you talk about potentially up to 20, 30 tapes that you have to find, you have to rewind to the sequence that this guy is in, that the quality of the image, because these tapes are reused and reused and reused and reused, so the quality of the image is terrible. So now you have to see if this guy is really impaired and, and all this. So that makes it difficult even for the casino to defend himself. Sure. Because yeah. the burden is going to be in the casino to defend himself to the gaming commission. Yeah. So at that point, having HD makes a big difference because you can definitely see really what's going on, unlike VCR or older and DVR technology that doesn't allow you that kind of quality. And well, Greg, you've got to remember, you know, break a VCR, who's going to fix it? Well, and... and it's and, not yeah, even the that's, tape. That's, that's the true. To play it. Well, <laughs> and, and, you know, of course, obviously, coming out of television, and, you know, a lot of stuff that Carol and I have still is on VCR, which God knows it's probably long gone. But, uh, you know, the banding aspect of that, you know, you play a VCR two, three times, four times maybe, and it could be, you know, the banding on it is going to be so wide that right. your, your images will be very, very small in this thing. And, uh, boy, Sylvain, it sounds like you're on to something because uh, how many of those thousand casinos, you say, still are using you know, really old technology. More than 200 are still on VCR. Wow. And I would say probably about uh, six to 700 of them are in uh, low-definition uh, analog video recording, 
through a what's called a digital video recorder, which was the first generation of recorder, which is 480 lines basically at best. Well, which still is terrible. Um, and, and okay, so wow, so 600 of the thousand are still on the old technology. Yeah, 200 that, are on VCR approximately. Six to seven hundred are on the older analog technology that is recording to a hard drive right. but poor quality, and you've got probably about two hundred of the remaining two hundred that are high definition today. Boy, you've got a heck of an upside, fella. That's, <laughs> Definitely, that's why I say that market. And plus, there's always new casino popping up, and when these new casino pops up, like the one in Maryland we did the Rocky Gap, um, at that point they go right to new technology. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that's phenomenal. Wow, Michael, any questions? It's uh, just a, a a terrific upside that he has in this surveillance business. Um, so it's how to grow. The symbol is S I T S, and it's a terrific opportunity. And we thank you very much, Sylvain, for coming on and uh, sharing us all this information. Well, thank you too for inviting me. And anytime you want to talk about the sub subject of technology, video security, electronic, I'm willing to come as a guest to your show, guys, and help you with that. Sounds good. I guess uh, Sylvain would be our person of interest, right? Oh, bad. That's the bad pun. <laughs> plug, plug for yeah. the CBS show, right? Oh. <laughs> Cameras exactly. everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, All right, gents, thank you for the invite. It was a pleasure to be with you this morning, and uh, hopefully I will talk to you soon again. Yeah, yeah, this 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 sounds amazing. Uh, be good, great information. Thanks, Sylvain. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Yeah, so, this, this is an excellent opportunity, and uh, there have been um, almost 400 million shares outstanding. The amount of shares have been reduced substantially, and... Um, uh, that's true. Uh, we, Mike, you're right when you said that. Last year we did a rescission of 160 million share uh, from the management to uh, basically increase the PPS. And that's why I was saying earlier that we also will reduce the number of authorized share uh, from 500 to 250. Right? At the beginning, our float was not the float, but the, out, the issue share was much higher. And last year we reduced it by 160 million shares. All right. Again, thank you, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. You. Good stuff. Wow. That you know, that is it, it's amazing. You know, and, and obviously you hear it. And I know Charles. I think you had a big prison release in uh, in Massachusetts uh, recently. You know, all and, the time. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, and of course California is releasing ten thousand or twenty thousand or thirty thousand in a whack. You know. And it's like, holy smokes, how many people do they have in jail out there, you know? Yeah, and, and the other side of the business, I mean, the number of states that have gambling in oh, yeah. on their, you know, uh, as, as a way of, of raising money is hey, Rogers. phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Mr. I mean, Mr. You know, every time you turn around, somebody else has, a, you know, an initiative on the ballot for gaming whether oh, yeah. I mean, they just gave they just gave a couple of um, uh, gaming licenses here in Massachusetts for um, uh, slot machine parlors Ooh, really? I mean you know it, gambling is gambling uh, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that they need the same kind of security that a regular casino does oh sure they do yeah that makes no difference Wow yeah and we before we forget, we have a Rule 17B disclosure that we're in the process of entering into a contract with SITS for $1,500 a 